ever-flowing liquid fire of life, ever-expanding and illuminating truth, which is always revealed with wisdom, a spiritual nutrient necessary for vitality that is maintained through selflessness, a filter of ether that aids purity, which is love. Love, a limitless paper lantern floating into infinity on the intentions and actions of initiates of the mysteries. Welcome fellow phoenixes to the Spiritual Phoenix Podcast, where we make a daily offering to the divine by putting our past on the pyre, searching the smoke for spirituality, turning the ashes into art, and adapting isolation into connection. Um, I'm your host, Ross Cessna, and together we are the Spiritual Phoenix. The intent of this show isn't to tell you what to think, but to get you to think and originally articulate yourself in a way that is uplifting. We are the artists of our lives, and today is a blank canvas. Let's collectively create a better tomorrow. I'd like to do something uh, I haven't done in a little bit, which is read a review. Um, this one is from BBB111Q. Um, I know who you are. So thanks for leaving the review, brother. Ross truly is a beautiful reflection. Keep on churning out the in spirit or inspiration magical phoenix. Um, thanks, Brandon. I appreciate that, man. Um, it's really awesome to have a review from you, brother. Also, if you'd like to leave a review for me on iTunes, that would be greatly appreciated. I'm not certain that the other platforms have the ability to... Um, leave reviews, but if you can leave a review on Blueberry, Stitcher, TuneIn, um, or Google Play, that would be awesome. The next thing I'd like to do is kind of share something that I just recently created where you can interact with the show more. Um, if you have a topic you want to hear discussed or something you want me to read um, or play on air, like if you just want to like have a shout out or something that I can dial into the podcast somehow, um, or if you'd like to leave a uh, one minute or less poem you'd like me to put on the sister podcast, the Phoenix Poetry Podcast, you can call the Phoenix voicemail line at 480-535-2561 and uh, leave me a voicemail. I'd like to hear from you all. Okay, and now I'd like to take a moment and uh, focus on what we're grateful for today. I know that uh, right now there's this big healthcare debate going on. Um, some of you know, I mean, if you listen to the podcast long enough, you've known that I struggle with mental health issues, um, addiction issues, and all that stuff. And pretty much near the end of all that stuff before I got better I had stopped working because I wasn't working I qualified for Medicaid and through Medicaid I was able to get a lot of uh, health care stuff taken care of that I couldn't afford that really is some of the things that got me to the position where I'm at today um, in regards to mental health and then I had some physical health issues that I wasn't able to take care of I mean even coming up next week I I'm having some um, dental work done which is in part because of, I mean, not even in part, to totally because of Medicaid. Um, I, I really am grateful that I was able to get that health care coverage because health care is expensive and it's not something that I was able to afford even when I was working, really. Um, and it certainly isn't something I was able to afford when I wasn't working, especially with all the different things I, I've had. So I'm grateful that that exists. Um, that I was able to access it and I hope that it's something that's continually available for people of uh, all walks of life because I think that universal health care is something that everybody should have access to and I think that that's a right not a privilege and I I'm just grateful that I was able to experience that so now I'd like to get into a couple of quotes for today to be a spiritual warrior one must have a broken heart Without a broken heart and the sense of tenderness and vulnerability, your warriorship is untrustworthy. That was said by, uh, I'm going to butcher this name, Kyagyam Trungpa. 
the next quote would be, A warrior must learn to make every act count, since he is going to be here in this world for only a short while. In fact, too short for witnessing all the marvels of it. And that was said by Carlos Castaneda. So, I want to get into the 753 code. And from what I was able to find out, this is a principle that is um, in jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu is, is uh, where this comes from. So, the 753 code is broken into the seven virtues of a warrior, the five keys to health, and the three states of mind. Now, the first one is resistitude. I, I might have messed that up. It might be rectitude as well. Um, I'm not necessarily always proper in how I say things. Um, regardless, resistitude or rectitude is a matter of having honorable thought. And I think that that's one of the most important ones. Um, if you don't have honorable thought, it's less likely that your actions are going to be honorable. And that doesn't mean that you don't have messed up thoughts um, sometimes because you can't control the way that things surface in your mind sometimes but you can control how you perceive it once you've had that thought you can go oh wow that subconscious thought isn't how consciously I want to operate um, I'd like to separate from that or I'd like to change that behavior or thought rather into a healthier one the next virtue of a warrior is courage um, courage isn't the lack of fear, it's the ability to move forward in spite of fear, um, to face that fear, to sit with that fear. Fear isn't a negative thing, also, like a lot of people make it. It can be if people let it control them, but by no means is, is fear bad. Fear is something that can keep you on the path, fear is something that can keep you humble. Um, courage also is, it's like a respect for fear, but a respect for yourself as well. So it's kind of the balance point between fear and being fearless is courage. Benevolence. And benevolence to me is really just like goodwill, kind action. Um, Doing the right thing for the right reasons, I guess, is benevolent. Helping people out. The next virtue of a warrior would be politeness slash propriety. Um, politeness is pretty straightforward. It's just being considerate of other people, respecting them, respecting where they're at, and not necessarily trampling over people um, for your own best interest. Um, it's a matter of like just holding the door for people saying you can go first I'll be okay waiting three seconds um, yeah that one's pretty straightforward honesty and sincerity is the next virtue of a warrior um, honesty is something that for me personally I found that I have to cultivate internally first because if I can't be honest with myself I cannot be honest with you um, honesty is crucial because it's not perpetuating the illusion further um, and sincerity is important because it's like that honest um, honest intention I guess it is what I, I would describe it as like I sincerely hope that this helps people I sincerely wish the best for people um, I think that's pretty straightforward. Honor is the next virtue of a warrior. And honor is basically doing the right things for the right reasons. And I feel that you have a more difficult time being honorable or acting in honor without the resisted, resistitude or rectitude. Um, because in, unless you can cultivate that mindset to differentiate this is against what I would do this is against morals this is against what is right overall um, honor 
is something that will make you take the long way around, uh, not the shortcut because it's the right way to do things, not because you want the easy route. And honor is something that has become very important to me in a large sense of where I, a large way that I've developed that sense of honor is uh, from different animes, <laughs> honestly. Um, and that even trickles down into loyalty. Um, I think that honor and loyalty are kind of commingled in some ways. Um, loyalty, like I said, was instilled for me largely because of anime also. Loyalty isn't one of those things to where you blindly follow somebody regardless. Loyalty to me means you can still be there for somebody but not necessarily believe in what they're doing at that time but you can still respect who they are and say okay maybe this choice isn't the best for them but it's not in my position to abandon them while they make this choice or completely turn my back on them I'll leave the door open if they want to um, and I'm here for them loyalty is just like that trust and faith in another person and putting yourself out there, I guess. It really requires all of the previous ones in lots of ways. Um, so yeah, those are the seven virtues of a warrior. The next are the five keys to health. The first one is rational nutrition. So to me, rational nutrition would mean like not trying to sustain yourself off Skittles and Frito-Lays or whatever. It w would mean eating uh, the best amount of things, or not the best amount, eating a healthy amount of things, or having like a healthy, well-balanced diet, um, and making sure that you're eating in the best way to sustain life and vitality, vigor, um, to put yourself in the best state of operation. If you view one being a, a warrior, like you don't want to be the warrior that has like the bloated stomach and is overly full. You want to eat enough to keep things running. There's that saying, you are what you eat. Um, and if you view us kind of like a, a car or something, that's our fuel. You wouldn't want to put crappy fuel in, in a car and you don't want to eat crap because then you'll feel like crap. Um, sensible exercise. And I like how they put sensible in front of that. Sensible to me means having that healthy balance of pushing yourself, but also not overindulging in exercise. Um, because again, if you exercise too much, you're going to be worn out. The point of exercise is to keep you sharp, to keep you um, healthy, to keep blood circulating, to burn calories, to build muscle, like all that stuff. It's not a matter of getting this in inhuman physical form or anything like that. It's a matter about feeling good and being able to operate at peak performance. Now, I will say this. These five keys to health are some of the things that I personally struggle with. Um, efficient rest. And again, efficient rest is a matter of finding that balance to where you're not sleeping all the time or resting too much and not making any forward progress. But it's also taking enough rest where you're not burning the wick at both, both ends. Um, constantly pushing, constantly striving. And for me, I'm trying very hard. I shouldn't say trying. I'm working towards finding that equilibrium um, because I, I kind of have been doing a lot of stuff nonstop to where I feel less rested than usual. I feel pretty good today. Um, slept in a little bit, went to bed a little bit earlier because that's what I needed. So efficient rest is Resting in a way that puts you in your best position. You don't want to be the warrior that's been up all night. And you don't want to be the warrior that's so lazy. That they pull like a muscle. When they go to make tea in the morning. Or something. I don't know. Um, proper hygiene. 
proper hygiene is just taking care of your body. It's respecting your body. It's, again, it's, it's a matter of like, for me, I have teeth, like a lot of teeth problems because uh, I didn't take care of my dental hygiene a lot when I was in active addiction and, and things like that. If I was in like a warrior position, if I had a toothache or something, or, or like my teeth were all jacked up in that warrior position, it would make it difficult to kind of focus on certain things. Granted, you still would. Um, the other thing about hygiene that I've found um, through kind of being grimy, I guess is the best word I'll say is that taking care of myself in that capacity makes me feel good about myself. And this trickles down into the next five, one of the next five keys to health, which is positive attitude. That's one of the ones that I do cultivate for the most part, um, most often, I should say. Proper hygiene, I definitely have more so. Um, it's really rational health, sensible exercise, and efficient rest that I struggle with. But proper hygiene plays into a positive attitude. Actually, all of those play into a positive attitude. If I'm eating well, I will feel better. If I'm exercising reasonably, I'll feel better. If I'm resting properly, I'll feel better. And if my hygiene is on point, I'll feel better. Um, and all those things make a positive attitude easier. And the reason that a positive attitude is one of the keys to health is it goes into that whole concept of um, how you think affects your whole through the whole study of epigenetics where through thoughts and beliefs kind of we can reprogram or shift um, DNA essentially. Um, I might be misquoting what epigenetics is but there's a lot of studies that prove that your belief structure, the way that you think affects the organism as a whole. Um, the next would be three states of mind and that would be Zan Shin which is alertness, awareness um, and there's a twofold approach to that there's like the external alertness or awareness where you're aware of your surroundings you're aware of what's going on um, you see those things and the internal awareness of that would be you're alert with where your mind's at where your thoughts are coming from um, where your emotions are coming from, why you're acting the way that you are, and what external situations create um, the situation that you're in now. And awareness, obviously, awareness and alertness are very similar, um, which is why I think they're together. The next one would be Mushin, and that is clear mind. Clear mind is something that it's not necessarily like you don't have anything on your mind, it's that you're clearly able to identify stuff and you've kind of removed this opaqueness of ego or things, or removed as much opaqueness of the ego as you can, I should say. Because it's not, I don't feel that it's something that can be dissolved. Um, but if you have like that clear mind if you're looking at situations and you're trying to be alert with that clear set of mind without all these external filters applied to it, you're able to more properly assess your external situations um, and you're also more able to clearly assess your internal landscapes, thought process, and the overall whole. In Fudoshin, emotional balance is the last of the three states of mind. And emotional balance is something that's difficult. The reason that that one's crucial um, is if you're overly happy, you tend to be a little bit more risky with things, at least I do. I think that that might, might be true for other people as well. And when you're overly risky in things, you can put yourself in a very dangerous position. And now the other end of the spectrum of that is if you're overly negative or overly like depressed or down, you're able to, um, you might be overly cautious, which can prevent certain good situations from occurring. If you're overly angry 
and you can definitely react in ways that can have some substantial consequences. Yeah, it's just balance is key to life is something I find and it's funny because I understand that concept really but then there's certain things in life where like I'll evaluate it and I'll be like oh that's something where I need to be in the middle of it and I'm like well yeah dude you already know that it's weird because I feel that like I don't think this is unique to me but well We'll understand something holistically, but then when it comes up to like these incremental points um, or like individual points of things, it sometimes becomes harder to remember that that one philosophy encompasses all things. Um, yeah, I really like the 753 code. Um, it's something that I saw on a meme on like Facebook or Instagram or something. I just really felt moved to do a uh, episode on it. Uh, I think that it's something that is, there's a lot of wisdom in it in a very short, concise way. And it's a very healthy um, way to determine what you might need to incorporate in your life to, oh, excuse me, give you the best opportunity to be your best. So with that, you can follow me on social media at Spiritual Phoenix. I offer free daily tarot readings at Spiritual Phoenix Tarot. Um, that site, or the paid readings, paid personal readings are up on my site, um, which would be conducted through Facebook Messenger. Uh, it's $25 for a four card reading with two bonus cards that are like, one's a quintessence card, the other one's just uh a randomly drawn Rumi Oracle card. I'll put a uh, discount coupon coming up in the near future on here as well. I mentioned the uh, Phoenix Poetry Podcast earlier, um, and I had been saying and saying I was going to get it on more so, uh, more things than iTunes. I actually took the time Monday. I put it up on Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, um, and Blueberry. So you can check out the Phoenix Poetry Podcast. Also, you can submit your own one minute or less poems to the Phoenix Poetry Podcast by calling the Phoenix voicemail line. And again, that number is 480-535-2561. You can visit the website, thespiritualphoenix.com. And with that, I love, respect, and appreciate all of you. Love and light. Namaste. I'm going to put this episode on the pyre. Peace. Don't believe. Don't follow. Do not consume. Do not watch. Largely what I'm talking about here is reclaiming experience. This is what's been taken from us. It's a self-advancing, self-expanding, self-defining process. And it takes no prisoners. The real world it isn't a spiritual world, it isn't a material world, it isn't an empty world, it isn't a solid world, it's simply...